Hi, my name is Randall Loy. This is the Infertility Channel and you found me once again. And I wanted to share something with you. This is kind of an inside uh, joke. A few years ago, I asked the employees, we have about 60 employees at our clinic, and we were trying to find just the right motto. And before we go there, I'll tell you what the motto ended up as. It, it turns out we put on our letterhead and our motto is where dreams are conceived. So that's, that's the winner. But I wanted to read you some of the other contest entries for best motto. First was no sperm, no eggs, no problem. The next is where dreams become diapers. IVF is the cheap part. Morning sickness lasts all day. Where desire becomes dementia. And finally, one embryo is 10,000 diapers. So today we're gonna to be talking about polycystic ovarian syndrome. And I do have a question from uh, Bethany in Kearney or Kearney, Nebraska. And she says, Dear Dr. Loy, I have been diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome since my teenage years. Now I'm 31 and would like to have a baby. What are the treatments available for me? That is a terrific question because as we've talked about in previous episodes, polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS is the most common endocrine disorder in women. The second would be hypothyroidism or underactive thyroid disease. So polycystic ovarian syndrome can be treated in a number of ways. I like to refer back to a conference that was kind of a joint effort of the American Society of Reproductive Medicine and the European Society for Human Reproduction and Embryology. It's called ESHRA. Anyway, those two societies kind of sponsored the conference that happened back in 2007 in Thessaloniki, Greece. And they basically endorsed the following strategies or treatments. Number one would be lifestyle modification. In other words, go ahead and lose that weight, get to the gym, eat a high protein, low carb diet, take off some weight because if you take off weight, it's going to only increase your chances for ovulation. It doesn't necessarily reverse PCOS, but it will help. Number two, clomiphene citrate or Clomid. That's the trade name here in the United States. And Clomid will cause ovulation in about 80% of PCOS patients. Ultimately about 40% of those will conceive on Clomid alone. And in any given cycle, about 20% or up to 20% of patients will ovulate on that oral medication. It's typically prescribed between 25 and 150 milligrams a day for about five cycle days, typically days three through seven, four through eight, or five through nine of the cycle, whether that cycle is spontaneous or induced by medication. Next, insulin sensitizing agents, especially one called metformin. Now metformin, if coupled with clomiphene citrate or used alone, seems to help with ovulation. It's been shown that metformin plus Clomid is better than Clomid alone in inducing ovulation, helping you to ovulate. It doesn't seem to increase live birth rates, but it does decrease the risk for ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, as well as the risk for miscarriage. So it's something to ask your doctor about. Well, what about letrozole? We've talked a lot about letrozole. What about letrozole? In the 2007 conference in Greece, letrozole was not especially recommended over clomiphene citrate. Remember that that information is now approaching seven years old. So next episode, I'm gonna be telling you about letrozole in 2014. Well, what about laparoscopy where the extra little cysts in the ovaries are burned off through coagulation or laser? That's called diathermy. And if one does that, it does increase the ability to ovulate for maybe a year or 18 months. That is not superior, however, that laparoscopic procedure is not superior to Clomid or to Clomid plus metformin. So these are some of the options I would like for you to discuss, Bethany, with your doctor there in Nebraska. There's some excellent reproductive medicine specialist in Nebraska. So talk to him or her about those things. I'd like to leave you with a story. We had a nurse a few years ago. She was Italian, and I can say that because I'm Italian. And she had a fiery personality. Her son came in one day, and I, I liked this little guy. He, he was just a really bright little guy, glasses, about seven years of age. And I said, how old are you? He said, uh, I'm seven. I said, well, I could have taken you for 18 or 19 years of age. I said, you're quite a handsome little guy. I said, how would you like to have a mustache? He goes, I would love a mustache. Well, I like writing with these little calligraphy pens. They're made by Sharpie. And I didn't know that these things were semi-permanent ink. 
So I said, come here, buddy. And so I made him sit down in the break room and I, I put a nice little mustache all the way across. And he went out to his mom and sported this. He goes, look, mom, Dr. Lloyd gave me a mustache. And she came right to me. She goes, what were you thinking? She goes, what, what did you use anyway? I said, well, I just used the Sharpie. Yeah, I said, it comes right off with cold cream. I said, just put some cold cream on it and it'll come right off. I, I thought I was right. Anyway, before I uh, gave her the opportunity to do that, I bolted to the hospital to make rounds. Well, she called me. She goes, Dr. Lloyd, that did not work at all. He's got to go to school like this tomorrow. I said, ugh. Well, he went to school the next day and his teacher said, what is this, a mustache? She goes, you go straight to the principal. And so he went to the principal's office. The principal said, why did you do this? He goes, I didn't do this. He said, my, my mom's boss, Dr. Lloyd, did this. Who? Dr. Loy. Oh, I know him. He was my doctor. Tell him hello for me. The mustache is great. Here's a note to get you back into class. That's my story. Absolutely true story. Look forward to seeing you next week on the Infertility Channel. Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to share this video with your friends and subscribe to catch all new episodes each week here on the Infertility Channel. Plus, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I love hearing from you. Comment below or tell me what you want to see on future episodes by sending me an email to comments at infertilitychannel.org. Until next week.